Hi, suppose so we want to calculate the block cycle fatigue for this load cases in step one it is like alternating load of P in vertical direction for 300 cycle then 2P in vertical direction for 200 cycles and finally there is four times of that P load for 10 cycles then we know that how to calculate the uh, cumulative fatigue uh, you can use it three steps and then you can put uh, the factor amplitude and factor mean and the number of cycles as we have discussed already uh, in this video we have discussed already in this video so you can watch it but the problems comes if we if this is a highly nonlinear system then the scaling of this loads the scaling of this results of from the Abacus ODB or uh, ANSYS RST or entire uh, OptiStruct S3D file might not be scalable because this is a this might be a highly nonlinear problem. Then what to do? Or suppose if it is a linear problem itself but the direction of loading is different. Then suppose for this case. Uh, if it is a pulsating load of P to zero load in vertical direction for 100 cycles and then it is 2P to, uh, to zero load in axial direction for 500 cycles then how come you can use the uh, how come you can calculate the cumulative fatigue uh, so this for that we can still use we are still going to use the minors rule of uh, cumulative fatigue by adding the damages uh, we are going to use uh, uh, we can use the transmax fatigue uh, transmax or channel max here but we are going to use basic here and we will use a third party tool for entire hyperview to basically add the damage so basically i will use this vertical odb file which corresponds to this stress state and i will solve it individually for I will check how many cycles it will get. I am uh, in. It will write in vertical dot DMF file. Then I will analyze it, basically. So it got analyzed, and uh, the vertical dot DMF file is generated, as you can see here. Now I will change the stress stress state to positive load, uh, which corresponds to this load. Uh, this is in axial direction. I am going to check how many cycles it will take. So I will just everything is same. I will just rename this to horizontal or maybe axial dot DMA. Let's check see how many cycles we get here. So it got solved here. Now uh, as you can see that I have two DMA files here for this DMA file is here and uh, this is called as vertical dma and this is axial dma we'll check how what is the result of vertical dma uh, in hyperview uh, let me load this file imp file and i will use it uh, vertical dma let's check how many what is the life i'm getting here so one by damage is nothing but life in fempad and uh, as you can see that As you can see that uh, I am getting a life of around uh, 1 e power 1.7 e power 5 and I will also use this in the side I will open axial.dma uh, so I will also check this what is the life here so as you can see that it is 1.37 e power 7 in pause in axial load and uh, yeah so in vertical load i am getting 1.7 e power 5 cycles and in uh axial load i'm getting 1.3 e power 7 cycles so now how to add this so means how to find out the cumulative fatigue cycles what is the block cycle in this case so i will again use the minus rule 
uh, which says like you can basically add the what uh, what the damage is and if it is equal to one then means failure occurs and if it is less than one that means the component is safe so i will calculate the damage and then i will just put one by cumulative damage to find out the fatigue block cycle here so what i will do here in hyperview let's let me open this press now so i will just open both files here so i am going to this icon i will delete this existing file now i will just load both dma files and this can be applied to the n number of dma files n number of damages can be added and we can get the reciprocal again so i have loaded both and let me click on apply so once it got applied now i am basically i have i am i need to go to results here go to derive loads step now i will go to type i need to go to linear superposition so basically i will just use the minus rule here so first is axial dma so axial dma uh, i am going to for axial load of 500 cycles so i will put a scale to 500 okay now i need to go to vertical dma vertical dot dma i am going for 100 cycles so i will put here 100 okay now click on okay now go to third load step that is derive load case and go to here don't plot life but if one by damage as one by damage can't be added only damage can be added as per minus rule so i will click on apply so this is the damage pattern now i will export this result to a d i will export this result to a s3d file once it got exported then i will clear this session and now i will open the s3d file which i exported now this already contains damage which we plotted in the last just few seconds ago then uh, we will go to results again we will go to derived results now we will calculate one we will create one variable which is fatigue cycles and i will insert this damage and fatigue cycles is nothing but one by damage so one by damage okay now once this variable is created i am going to plot this variables so yeah so you can see this min life is coming out to be here which is around 1746 cycles block cycles and it is so that means it can already pass this load almost 1700 times then it will it is going to fail so this is how you can calculate the block cycle fatigue if the loads are non linear if both loads are different in nature or the your structure is too much non linear that the scaling of loads is not valid for a non linear structure so this is how you can calculate the block cycle fatigue thank you